Amen. All right, so we're, I'm going to connect the dots here a little bit for everyone. The last uh, two weeks ago, we, I preached a message called Gird Up, which was that's some old school reference to get ready. And, and the idea behind that was when God moves, we got to be ready to move when he moves. So we got to prepare ourselves a little bit for what God wants to do. And then last week, I preached Sunday, Sunday. That it is important to be in church on Sunday. There, is, there are all kinds of benefits and values to being in church. So I'm going to connect the dots for that a little bit. I think as you came in, you should have received these little invite cards. Everybody got a little invite card? Just wave those cards around. I want to know that you have them, that you didn't lose them and throw them away somewhere. Because these are valuable little cards. These give people access to one big party. All right, so here's how this is going to work for two weeks from now on the 21st. We are not telling people where we're going to meet. It's a secret. All right? So what they got to do is they got to go to tworiversassembly.com or you can go to tworivers.church. We own all kinds of different ways to get to our website. But if they go there on, on the very front page, there's a place where it says RSVP so you can get the information. What we're going to do is on February 19th, we're going to send an email with our, with our meeting location, and we're going to send a text out to everybody who's pre-registered. So you want to pre-register to get that information. If you're already in our computer system, I will be sending that email to everybody that's in there, and I will be texting everybody that's already in the system. But if you, So what you got to do is you want to take these cards, and here's my dream is that on that day we're going to have 500 people in attendance. So it's going to be one big party because the best party is the party when somebody accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I mean, it's cool. We're here for three years. But the bigger party is that we invite our friends and say, hey, look, we're going to be in a secret location. You don't even know where it's going to be. And when you come, we're going to have free root beer floats. It's going to be a blast. And I'm telling you, that Sunday is going to be a fantastic Sunday. So make sure you take these cards. Go invite people. I already told some of the team members to put them in, the, put them in like weird places. Put them in the little cup holders of all the other theaters that are in here. Right? Somebody might find them and come. Who knows? So let's just, let's just carpet this city with invites to come to church. Who knows? That's not a bad idea to invite somebody to church, right? Right. So, I mean, what's it going to hurt? So let's, let's do that. Let's, make, let's have a good time with it and get everybody out. So this week, this is what I'm going to talk about this week. This week is Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, wow. Well, not too many football fans in here today. How about fans of commercials? Like, like that, I know a lot of people don't care about the football, but they care about the commercials. How many people care about, what is it, Coldplay doing the halftime show? That's going to be one rocking halftime. And that's, trust me, get your pillows, everyone. Halftime's here. Okay, so, so I, I thought just to start the week off, I'd, I'd come out. You, you guys heard about the Denver Broncos, right? They, they didn't. Well, here's the thing. They, they didn't make the flight. They didn't make the flight. You guys know why, right? They, they got stuck on a broken escalator and missed their flight. Oh, that'll catch up to some of y'all. So here's, here's, some, here's some football trivia for you. Here's some football trivia. This is kind of like a puzzle. If you have, uh, if you have you're stuck in a room with a grizzly bear, an angry lion, and a Patriots fan, and you've got a gun with only two bullets, what do you do? Shoot the Patriots fan twice. Yeah, that's right. All right, one last, one last football, football problem here. So, so if you got a bunch of Cowboys, how many Cowboys fans does it take to change a light bulb? None of them. They love living in the giant's shadow. Oh, <laughs> snap. Ooh, busted. Well, 
Today, yeah, so, which is a great segue into this week's message. This week's message is entitled, Guard Your Tongue. <laughs> Guard Your Tongue. Speak life. Just, uh, hey, if you take out your phones, you can like us on Facebook and then post some, take a picture or something, and then hashtag it with speak life, or hashtag I am TRA. That means I, we are the church. Church is not a building, it's a group of people. It's what we do every day of the week. So go ahead and ta- hashtag that out if you if you check in and say I'm here. That's a uh, I want I'm I'm trying to put hashtags on these things so people can start. You can look up and see how many people posted, and you kind of build an online community that way. So if you didn't know how to use a hashtag, that's what it's all about. So you can type that hashtag in. Facebook will search it. Instagram will search it. Twitter will search it, and you'll be able to kind of see what other people are doing at Two Rivers. Um. So speak life. This, is, this idea this week is guard your tongue. I learned about this when I was on an intern several summers ago when I was in college. So by now it's like a long time ago. I was in college, and while I was there, I did an internship in Naperville, Illinois at Calvary Church. And there were six girls and six guys on this internship, and we were all living in one house together. And I was really excited about this because all the girls were pretty. And I was a single guy, so I'm thinking, this is going to be the greatest summer ever. Not only do I get to do ministry all summer long, I get to be in this house with these six great girls. It's going to be awesome. By the end of that summer, I had made three of the six girls cry. <laughs> but, but not for good reasons. The reason they were crying was because I thought I was being cute. I was picking on them, joking with them. I was thinking I was flirting, and they're, they're walking away from that inter- interaction and were crying. I was like, oh, I don't think that went the way I thought it should go. Next. <laughs> then they cried too. So what I discovered was that I need to learn to guard my tongue, that this is something we all kind of share this problem where we're going through life, and our tongue kind of just gets away from us. There's, there's stuff that just kind of slips out that we wish it wouldn't. We, I, I, could I get that one back? Could I get that one back? I, I didn't really want to say that. Or there's times when we're just full on like I ain't trying to guard my tongue. I'm going to give you all of this right here, right now. Who's ever done that? Get, like, so Because the tongue is difficult. It is tough for us to rein in our mouth. And how many know that it's important to rein in your mouth? Because you can create a lot of problems in your life that you don't need. And you can create a lot of problems in somebody else's life that they don't need if you just let your tongue loose. Now, I know we're in America, so when we start talking about rain, guard your tongue, it's like, this is America. This is the land of the free. We got free speech. That's right, you have free speech, you just don't have free consequences. You can say whatever you want, you just got to live with what you said. So that's, this, is what, this is what we have to deal with here. And so this is impactful because our tongues try to get out from under control and they try to do whatever they want to do, and we know that there's an impact to that. M- parents with their kids, when you're growing up, you probably, you, there's some people that heard their parents telling them all kinds of horrible things. You're no good. You're never going to amount to anything. Or they didn't hear anything good from their parents. Like, they never heard, I love you. Never heard, you're, gonna, you're, you're, you're doing good. I'm proud of you. And so that kid, you grow up, and you say, I'll, I'm never going to be like mom and dad. I'm never going to be like what mom and dad did. And turns around, you have kids, and you bring them for baby dedication Sunday. And next thing you know, you're, you're trying to guard your tongue. Am I going to say, I'm not going to say things to my kids the way that they were saying, said to me. And, and so we, we come into all kinds of trouble with the way that we talk, the way that we say things. And we have to learn to rein that in. In fact, this is a really big problem, especially in marriage, because you, there's some interesting stats about marriage. There's four types of communication problems that can lead to divorce. Number one is criticism 
of a partner's personality. So what that's saying is the way that I talk can lead to divorce. And the moment somebody said I do, they said, they said something like, I, I promise for better or for worse, for rich or for poor, for in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us both part. And then we go ahead and we just criticize and, and the thing that we wanted to have happen turns south on us because we don't know how to communicate. Well, there's this other awesome stat. I love internet stats. It's from this lifestyle website, yourtango.com. So you can go look that up, Your Tango. I think it's a marriage site. But they pulled 100, 100 mental health professionals and, and they talked to them about what it is, what's the number one factor that leads to divorce. And here's what it is, is communication. Men cite nagging and complaining as the top communication problem in their marriage. So don't say amen right now, men. Like nagging, amen. It's horrible. Hear that, honey? Start elbowing each other. We're going to get there quicker. Women cite that their spouse doesn't validate their opinions or feelings enough. So one, it's too much talking. One, it's not enough talking. But we got to guard our tongues. This is a real problem. So, so this, it, we can get into all kinds of trouble with the things that we say in the way that we do it. And so it's no wonder that in the book of James, it's written, James writes to us about this, how difficult it is to guard our tongue. In fact, it's found in James chapter 3, verse 2. It says, we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. So James is saying, it, hey, this is a tricky thing, guys. If you, can, if you can do good with your mouth, you're a perfect person. If, if you're always speaking life, if you're, if you're not making any mistakes with the things that you say, you're perfect. You got everything else under control. So when I see this, I say, well, and, and James ought to know because he's actually the brother of Jesus. It's like he actually walked with Jesus, and he saw how Jesus lived his life, and he's able to say, yeah, this is how it's done, guys. So what I like to take off of this is this idea that the tongue thing leads to another. Instead of one thing leads to another, the tongue thing leads to another. What that is is that if your tongue, if you're saying negative things all the time, if you're letting just slander come out of your mouth, you're letting lies come out of your mouth, you're letting uh, boasting and, and pride come out of your mouth, what's going to happen is that you're going to have negative things come back into your world. I had a buddy of mine when I was growing up, he just ran his mouth nonstop. He would just never rein his tongue in. And it would get him into fights and it would get him into trouble. And eventually it got him into prison. Because he, was, he went to a party, he's running his mouth at the party, saying whatever he wanted to say, and he ticked a couple of guys off. They took and hit him with golf clubs and beat him pretty good. He decides he's going to get revenge. He goes back to his truck, gets his screwdriver, and stabs somebody. So he's in, he's in prison. His, see, if he'd have just reined his tongue in, he wouldn't have hit that place where he got into the fight and all the altercations. And it, it all just started with the tongue. The tongue thing leads to another thing. And the flip side of that is also true. If you, if you use your tongue to speak good things, if you use your tongue to say things that are right, to say things that are good, it's going to lead to a good thing. Like husbands and wives. Husbands, I, I promise you, if you say a bunch of good stuff to your wife all day long, the tongue thing leads to another thing. Right? Your day may finish better than it started. Okay, are you tracking me? Do you see how that works? The tongue thing leads to another. You use your tongue the right way. God, you just, you just speak words of life. You speak wholeness. You speak encouragement to other people. And it's going to come around. It's going to be better with your kids. 
My wife is a master of this. She is an encourager. She, she can go into a classroom full of the worst kids in the city, and she'll just encourage them by the end of that class they do anything she wants her to do because she's just lifting them up, encouraging them. She, she, it, she didn't have to say all the things they were doing wrong. She told them all the things they were doing right, and by the end of that day, they couldn't wait to hear more praise. So the way that we talk, you know, one, as a parent, one, or in fact, in any of our interactions, there's a bank that, that's being kept. So for you and for me, we can make deposits, and you can put in good things over and over and over again, but the ratio of making a withdrawal, you got to have done at least 8 to 15 good deposits before you're ever going to say one negative thing. we got to guard our tongue. So let's move on. This is James chapter 3, verse 9. It says, With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. You know what James is saying? That this is going to reveal who we are. The way that we speak is evidence of who we are. So this is important for us as believers because how we speak, so when, when people get saved, they accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, here's what we do. We stop cussing, right? Everyone says, oh, they stopped cussing. But would your neighbor say you stopped cursing? This is, this is a really interesting thing because you could stop saying cuss words. You could stop saying negative things. But what happens... Like, everybody agrees on this idea that, that we ought to say, not say lies about people, right? Like, like, if it was a lie, like, he's cheating on her. She's stealing money. That's a bad idea. But what about when it's a true thing about somebody? Like, he's cheating on her or she's stealing money. He... He was a drug addict. So it's, it might be true, but I want everybody to see this verse. It's called the golden rule. It's found in Matthew chapter 7. It says, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. So elbow your neighbor, but do it in a way that you would want it done to you. Just go ahead and make sure they're not sleeping, right? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. This is the simple golden rule. This is found in almost every religion. It's found in almost every single code of morals in the world. It's this idea of fairness. How would you want it done to you? And so when we come to this question, like, how are we talking about people? How are we talking about people? Are you, are you sharing true information about other people that you wouldn't want shared about yourself? So we can stop cussing, but we need to stop cursing. This is a, you share, hey, did you know that she cheated on him? Yeah, that may be true, but it's not something I need to share. So... So just to, just to put this in concept for everyone, there's, there's another verse that says, love does no harm to a neighbor. It does no harm. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So when I talk about guarding our tongues, I'm talking about this in a way that we might not always think about. We need to be really careful with the way that we talk about other people, the way that we share information. Because the way that we do that as believers, we're not fooling anybody. You're not fooling anybody. It's, it's real obvious who we are and what's coming out of our fountain. It's real obvious what's coming out of us if, 
if the way that we talk about people, it might be true. Like, I'm not lying. It's the truth. Great, but you're breaking the law of love because love does no harm to a neighbor. So I'm going to give you three questions, and then we're going to wrap this up with how we respond. But I'm going to give you three questions to ask before you share information with somebody. I'm just sharing. Who's ever heard that before? Who's ever led with that? Yeah, I'm just sharing information. Sure you are. It's maybe. So here's the first question. Does, does the person who I'm speaking to really need this information? This is the gossip question. Am I, am I sharing this information? Do they, do they, should they be part of this information stream? Is it important that they know about this? If the answer is no, don't share it. Number two is what I'm saying fair? Is, does this meet the golden rule? Is this something that even though it may be true that I don't want shared with anybody else if it was known about me? Because all of us, we could all think of a moment where there's something embarrassing in our life, some kind of moment in our past that we wouldn't want everyone to know about. We wouldn't, you know, in, in this whole room, anybody that would say that there's not something about your past that you wouldn't want somebody to know about or to be broadcast widely, you are you're either lived a very boring life you're, or you're a liar, right? There's some part in there that, that everybody has, has this. And so we just need to make sure that we're applying the golden rule. It's such a simple thing. And maybe it's so simple we forget to talk about it. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And then the third one, is that why am I saying it? Am I, trying to, am I trying to say this so I can have some kind of gain? Like maybe, maybe if I can just put them down a little, I might feel a little bit or better about myself. Or I'm going to get ahead. I'm gonna, that's, a, that's somebody I'm in competition with at work. And if I just share this little detail about them, you know what? I'm going to feel better about it. And then they might be disqualified. That's, that's cursing somebody. That's literally cursing somebody. That's what it is in the Bible. The Bible doesn't really talk about cuss words. It says don't use coarse language. There's one reference to that. But it talks about don't curse over and over and over and over again. And so we don't fool anybody. You're not fooling anyone. Talking about, well, it's the truth. Yeah, but it doesn't meet the scriptural standards of whether it's gossip or whether it meets the golden rule or whether I'm just trying to do that. I'm, I'm not saying this out of humility. I'm saying this to try to get ahead. And so anytime we, we get ready to share some information as believers, if we're going to guard our tongues, we ought to run it through these three questions. Does the person who I'm speaking to really need this information? Is what I'm saying fair and what, why am I saying it? So you can go ahead and write those down. I'll tell you, take notes on this. This is good stuff, people. Everybody say amen right now. That way, that's, that's, that's how I know that you're with me on this. So here's what we're going to do to respond now. We're going we're gonna to wrap this all up. Let's go ahead and go back one. There should be two responses. Did we move? Let's, all right, let's, there's, uh, we'll do this response. Why, why do you need or who do you need to apologize to? We talk about guarding our tongues. We need to guard what we say, how we say it. We come to the realization that our tongues kind of run a little extra quick. They run a little faster than they ought to. And James says we all fail in many ways. We all fail in many ways. I fail at this constantly. I have to go, just last Sunday, I was joking around. And I had to go during worship, talk to somebody and say, hey, listen, I want to make sure the way I was joking was not in any way putting you down. The person was, they were happy with me. <laughs> but you know what? I don't know. I don't know. So I, I just try to, I'd rather, I would rather walk a path of humility 
and let love shine through my life than to walk blindly hurting the people around me. It's time for me to, to rein in my tongue. It's time for me to guard my tongue. And so that's what we, who do we need to go apologize to? Who do I, who needs to hear from me? Hey, you know what? I, I've said some things I shouldn't say and I, I want to apologize to you for it. So, and then the second response is this. Can, if you don't think you have a problem with guarding your tongue, here's my challenge to you. That you would, for 24 hours, this is going to be a problem for some people, I know, because it's Super Bowl day, so we got to talk nasty. Oh, you can't do any good trash talking. For 24 hours, that you wouldn't say anything negative about anyone. Anyone. That includes politicians. Yeah, I know. It's like politics season. Don't say anything negative for 24 hours. And here's how you know you got a problem. If you can't go 24 hours without saying something negative, there's a real problem. Because here's here's the standard. If you can't go for 24 hours without drinking alcohol, you're an alcoholic. That's one of the questions. Can you go 24 hours without a drink? If you can't go 24 hours without a drink, guess what? You got a problem. So this this is how rampant... This is for us, if we can't go 24 hours without saying something negative about somebody else, we got a problem. And so it takes us back to this response. Who do you need to apologize to? Right? And so it, this, is what, this is how it all boils down to this. Am I guarding my tongue? Am I guarding my tongue? Am I speaking life? Am I an encourager to the people around me? Am I lifting people up? Or am I, am I saying I'm a Christian? Am I saying I'm a believer, but what comes out of me is spoiled? What comes out of me is curses and not blessing. And it impacts the world, sees it. Everyone around us sees it. And people are just so tired of, of us saying how good we are when we're not actually a blessing to the people around us. And so that just causes, it just causes us to pause and say, God, help me. Help me to rein in my tongue. Help me to rein it in so I can be, help me to be a blessing to everybody around me. And this is going to take a tremendous amount of self-control and self-discipline. And this is how we get it. This is how we're going to close because, you, look, if you try to be good enough, and, and God tells us, look, go ahead and as much as you can, do your absolute best. But in the end, there is a war going on in your spirit. It's between your flesh and your spirit. And the Bible says the flesh does not want to do what's right. And so here's what we need, everybody in this place. We need the Holy Spirit at work in our life. We need the grace of God to come and fill us so that we can rein in our tongue. So that we can be a blessing and not a curse. So let's do this. Every head bow and every eye close around the place. And just for a couple of seconds, I, I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about what God's doing in your heart. And I want you to give God the opportunity to come and, and change some things. Say, God, I know that I haven't always... My mouth is kind of out of control. I know I'm, I'm not always blessing my wife. I know I'm not blessing my kids. I know my coworkers, my roommates, people that are around me, I get myself into trouble with the things that I say. And you know that's you, and, and we're here in this place. I'm just going to ask you to invite the Lord to come into that place so that you can guard your tongue, so you can be a blessing. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to respond in this way. And then, and then there's some of us who have never, ever made Jesus Lord of their life. And so this thing that I'm talking about, you can work at it over and over and over again to guard your tongue, but there's something 
that you're going to wake up in six months or a year and say, I'm, I can't do it, I just quit. I'm, I'm never going to make it. And what the Bible says is that you need to be born again. You need to have your, the inside changed before the outside changes. And so the way this is going to work for you is you, if, you, if the Bible says if you will simply say, God, I surrender to you. I need you as my Savior. I, I see what Jesus Christ did for me, and I'm going to accept him as my Savior. And I'm going to live for him. I'm going to live for Jesus. If you do that, the Bible says that you'll become born again. The old will pass away and the new will come. So that's what I want to do right now. I want, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you know this moment if you died, you, would, you don't know where you would be, heaven or hell. I want to give you the opportunity to respond to make Jesus Lord of your life, that you'll be born again. Your sin will be washed away. You'll be brand new. So that's you. Just slip your hand up in the air and say, Pastor Will, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to be born again. I want to have no doubt in my mind that I'm going to be in heaven. And I want to have the Holy Spirit come and change me and fill me and make me new. If that's you, slip your hand up right now. Put your hand up. Now let's all put our hands down. We're going to all pray this prayer together. Everybody in this place, so nobody's got to pray alone. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I know that I've failed in many ways. But you were perfect. And you died for me. And I thank you for that. And I believe that you rose again. So I want you to be the leader of my life. I'll follow you. I'll obey you. I'll live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, everybody, put your hands together real loud, real proud for everybody that made that decision.